Have you ever wondered how much a fire truck costs? Yes, I have. Okay. Any guesses? Mm, I would say a million dollars. Okay. So that's that's a good guess. The first one, the first you know estimate that I saw caught was that much. Um, okay. but they they kind of specify it down. So for pumper trucks, um, it's two hundred thousand to six hundred fifty thousand. But for okay. aerial fire trucks, like the ones with the big ladders, so there's yeah, the yeah, yeah. Not like the hoses, and there's the ones with the big ladders. The ones yep. with the ladders cost anywhere from five hundred thousand to uh one million four hundred. Wow. So is that the only difference between the two water trucks? Just like or between the two fire trucks, just the just the ladder? Um, I mean, I'm not sure exactly what else there is, and I know there there's a couple other versions you can get as well, but those are like the two main ones. Yeah, wow, that's crazy. I think like I feel like I've heard that number before, which is like why yes it, but yeah, that's pretty absurd when you think about like a car, like a like a fire truck. That's crazy. Yeah, and and how long do you think they last? Mm. Four four years. Yeah. So the the pumper lasts ten, and then the the ladder truck lasts like twenty to thirty. No um, way! Wow. And some some other info that I ran into on the way. So ambulance costs anywhere from seventy thousand to four hundred thousand, and only lasts like five to seven years. No way. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Cool. That's nice. Okay. So I was looking into this one company, Spartan Motors. They're one of the biggest distributors of emergency vehicles. Um, and they have kind of interesting uh, history. So they started by themselves. They got bought by a group called Shift Group. Um, and what I kind of figured out through all this research is all these big vehicle kind of things. So um, emergency vehicles like uh, RVs, campers, like, um, you know, big delivery trucks, they're, they're all very similar. So they all get made by the same people. So there's mm -hmm. very rarely do you find someone who only makes one thing. So they're all kind of put smushed together. So, you know, this big group that had other similar trucks bought them uh, and then they were just two years ago they were sold to a different group um but let me give you some numbers so they okay so this the the current group that owns um spartan those are the fire trucks emergency vehicle response yep um they paid 55 million for this company and it's like the second biggest manufacturer of fire trucks um so honestly like less than i thought like 55 million seems less yeah. than I thought, but uh, when you really get into it, like they're not making a lot of profits on these. So really? for, for so they paid 55 million for this. Um, that same company in one year does 1 billion in sales. Wow. That's right? crazy. But there's, it's, you know, the type of product that they have, they're only making 57 million um, in, 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 um, in profit. So that's 5%. And every, that's every actually, year. Yeah, every year. So that's that's combined with the other emergency vehicles that they have this this bigger. Okay. Um, but but Spartan they paid right only fifty five million for. So you, you kind of get the, the idea of the scale. But um, it, it's a really long process to order these. Um, and the thing is, mm -hmm. it's mostly governments that are ordering these. And so if there's a bad yep. economic time, um, you know they can just put the purchase off for like two years. Um, and yeah. so yeah, not not the best business to be in. Um, and then I guess. Was the only other note is that all these orders are customized. So, to okay. me, like this is interesting, but pain in the butt to to be in this. Yeah, way. it sounds brutal. That's it. Do you know what Spartans uh like revenue and sales were? Um, I I wasn't able to find it like broken down, and okay. I, I I searched for a while on this one. Yeah, no, that's fair. Wow, that's crazy. I wonder I wonder what they do because like yeah, fifty five million just does not does not feel like a lot. Yeah. And, yeah, it definitely sounds like a business that's a pain in the butt to be in, but it sounds like like one of those businesses. It's like, yeah, you're selling like to governments and it's something that literally like every single, you know, even little tiny town like in the country needs. Um, so I'm I'm surprised that they don't like kill it. Okay, have you seen this uh, Osmosis AI? Have you heard of that? Uh, no. Okay, so was, did you listen to the AI episode on MFM yet? I did, I did, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So, so they mentioned this on the pod. This is like one of the ones. Um, it's kind of interesting. Like, it's cool. It's so if you go to the website, um, you basically like can you use text to describe what you want, like whatever your ad is. So it creates ads for you. So, say like I want a Facebook ad of X Y Z, and then I upload a photo of my product, and like this tool is supposed to combine the two and just create an ad. And it can create like plenty of different kinds of ads. Um, so super cool. But I actually I went through the 
like I went through the process on their site and I don't, I, I guess it's maybe not launched yet because when mm -hmm. I go to do that, it's like a type form. And so it's like, tell me about your ad, uh, so upload a photo of your product. Okay. We'll get back to you with the results. Uh, um, they're in, in so, beta or something. Okay. Yeah, they are in beta. So they probably just doing some testing. Um, but they mentioned an MFM, like the lady who started it. So I looked her up and her name is Mickey, F Mickey Friedman. Um, this is crazy. So she graduated from University of Chicago in 2021. So like a year ago, and she just launched this Osmosis AI and like, she's the founder and she created it, which is just crazy. Um, huh. and I feel like when I see people like that, like it blows my mind. Like she's a, I mean, she's a little bit older than you, but she's, she's like a year or two older than me, you know, maybe, maybe three years older than me at, at the most. And she founded this like amazing AI company. Um, and so I reach out to her. I haven't heard anything back yet, but like, I just, like, I just want to like talk to someone like that. Like, I, I just want to know, like, what is it? Like, what did you do? Like, what did, what have you done with your life so far that like led to this? Like, what are yeah. like one, like, what are the skills you've developed? Like, like what experiences did you have that like allowed you to pursue something like this and like execute on it at 23? Like that's, that's, cr that's crazy. It is crazy. Um, wow. Yeah. The photo I uploaded here is like her background, which she like has a cool background, but nothing like crazy, crazy, like software engineering intern, intern. Yeah. Yeah. Like a bunch of software engineering internships and, and then launched, launched this. What did you go to um, school for? I mean, I'm assuming some, something in software or like computer tech. It, no, it's a cool product though. Like if she can get it going, I think it's really cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited for all this AI stuff. Um, and it, did you listen to the episode where Sam interviewed Sean? Kind of about his his full story. There were the E Hot Wings. Uh no. No, okay. So it's the most recent episode, but but basically okay. they're both like, man, like, you know, we gotta get into AI. Like we need to start something. And I'm just like I, I feel like we're, you know, if we wanted to, we're in a tough position. We don't have any money. We don't have a bunch of connections. Like we're not developers. We'd have to hire some people, right? To to do this yeah. kind of stuff. So I'm kind of wondering if there's a way where we can do it without having to know how to code, but I, I just don't know. Yeah. I, I think there, I think there's a way, but I think it's through like the way is to have connections and have people who do know how to do that kind of thing. And I just, I don't have those connections. Yeah. Um, one, one thing I've thought about doing, and I, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to do this. Like I definitely haven't committed to it yet, but it's just like, starting like a coding course, like a beginner's course and like trying to get like a base understanding of like just that world. Because right now I feel like I, I'm an infant. Like I know, I know literally nothing, you know? This, this Pellegrino one where it says sparkling water plus Reddit, Reddit hate subreddit. All right. So Pellegrino, right? Everyone knows it. Yeah. All right. So it actually started 600 years ago. Um, wow. That's crazy. Just in a very different form. So they this like Pellegrino only gets water from this like specific site and it takes like 30 years to get like from the top of the mountain to the bottom of the mountain something like that um and so apparently they're they bottle like a million bottles a day there of this water wow. and i no I, guess it, I don't know if it automatically um is sparkling i i don't know how i missed that um okay i just i just shared it so you should be able to access it okay. um yep but but basically, they had nine hundred million in sales um last year, and that was five percent of the sparkling water market. Um, so much bigger than I would have thought. Um, and yeah. it's also kind of made me wonder, like, you know, why are people choosing this over any other brand? So I I linked this little like advertising because they you know they clearly have some good advertising if people are yeah. buying. Um, but this kind of led me into Nestle. So they're owned by Nestle, and okay. um, so Nestle made. 11 billion dollars in profit last year no way 11 billion wow right? so 87 billion in revenue and 11 billion in profit um and okay there's this subreddit are you, are you able to see the link yet uh yep okay the, so the you fuck Nestle? The subreddit. there's two like over two hundred thousand people who are on here and it's all about like boycotting nestle i mean <laughs> it's just crazy so there's a couple like stories, you know, headliner, like Gerber baby food has poison in it. Um, Nestle's like taking more water or more child labor than they're supposed to. Um, you know, Nestle, like 
convince third world mothers that their baby formula is as good as breast milk, but there's no clean water. So these people are, the babies are getting, aren't getting the nutrition they need. There's like wow. more plastic than any other, any other company in their, in their, uh, their bottles. But I mean, overall, it's just crazy. Like I listed some of the, the companies that they own and it, I mean, down at the bottom, you can see there's Kit Kats, you know, Gerber, Dior, Dior, Giorno, Giorno, um, you know, like oh, yep. frozen pizzas. Pizza, yeah. And they have like almost 300,000 employees. So, you know, do the math. They're, no they're, making, way. Like, they're making like $320,000 um, per employee. So, wow. That's just that's crazy. unreal. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, you never would have thought. I didn't, I didn't even know Nestle. I didn't realize Nestle was like an empire of different brands. Yeah, yeah, neither did I. A lot of those are big names. Wow, that's crazy. Dude, that, that's kind of like an industry. We should, maybe maybe next episode, we'll dive into like that industry more because I feel like there's quite a few like similar brands. Like an example is like Kroger, you know, who just own like anything and everything. Like I, like I wonder what their, what their like business model is and, you know, like what the profit margins are. That'd be an interesting thing to dive yeah. into. Like like General Mills would be one too, right? Yep, yep. But, but- Anyways, if you if you spend ten minutes on this subreddit, you'll you'll start reconsidering eating their products. Okay, I'll start going through. Right. That is hilarious. Yeah, I love it. Cool. That was a good find. All right. Um, all right. Next. Uh, okay. So we this is just this is like a little bit personal, but like we've never like kind of gone over like personal goals. So okay. there are like a couple couple sides to this. One, I just wanted to hear like what your like personal goals are. Um, for, you know, short-term and long-term future. And then also like, how do you, like, what are some, like, how do you go about setting goals? Like, do you have any sort of like method or process or do you just kind of, you know, come up with a number? Yeah. I don't, I don't think I have a good process for you. Um, yeah. I think maybe like super short-term, you know, like today, the next week, um, I can like, I guess the the only thing that I that I would have to say on goals is they have to be easily measurable. So you can't just say like, "Oh, I want to read more." Like, no, no, no. Yeah. You have to be able to clearly mark whether you achieved it or not. Um, yep. So I I like that, but I guess, um, yeah, that that's really like the only criteria I think when setting goals. Um, but okay, some of my goals, like I was thinking about this one today. Um, I would say make a million dollars in the next five years yeah um i mean you know i have little goals like read every day um try to network and connect with people um but like long scale goals aside from so that's like monetary but uh let's see like how how i want to be spending my time i would say is is mostly talking to people like i think we're interested in the same things so yeah people learning um and just doing something that I like. So I think like, that's a big criteria for me. It's like, do I enjoy doing this? And if I don't, then I want to spend time doing something else. That I can make money to pay someone else to do that. So then I only fill my life with things that I want to do. Right. So totally. the, the goal to be like completely in that zone is like eight years, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's a good goal. I think I have, yeah, I've got a similar goal. Like in that sense. I think dude, the, the million dollars in five years is awesome. I think that's like, honestly, mine is I want to have a million dollars by the time I turn 25. So yeah. like pretty similar goal, um, kind of out there. Um, and yeah, one, so one like kind of goal framework, like I don't have any process for me for like setting goals, but one thing that I have kept in mind since I heard it on MFM was, I think it was Sam maybe talking about it, but they were talking about how like he kind of sets like a, like a floor, like a floor goal, like, like, yeah, if I hit, if I hit this mark, like, like I've done good enough, like this, I would consider, I would, this is the lowest point at what I would, at which I would consider what I've done is success, which is a good mark. And then he's got this like ceiling goal. That's like, and like, if I did this, like, this is, this is like my wildest dream. Like, this is the craziest thing I think I could have achieved. Yeah. So I started trying to like set, set some like goals in a similar sense. I think it's a good way because like if you set two like low you know a goal that's too achievable it's like okay well once you hit that goal then like what's the motivation you know to keep to keep like pursuing something right um so if you have those two like then you have just extra motivation to get to that next milestone 
Yeah, I, I really like that. I think I need to spend some more time on kind of clarifying my goals. I don't spend too much time writing them down or thinking about them exactly, but I think it also helps like once you have those, then you can kind of visualize them in your head and be like, yes, you know, just, just kind of like, um, what well, the M it starts with an M like, um, just create out of thin air almost. Um, Oh yeah. I know. I know. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Um, hey, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Manifest, manifest, manifest. Yeah. Just manifest it. So I like that. I, I need to spend more time on that for sure. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right. That's all I got on goals. What's the, cool. uh, let's, let's do the suicide one. I, I'm curious. The suicide one. Okay. So I, I kind of pitched this idea last night to someone else and they were very skeptical of it. Um, so okay. warrant some background checking, but anyways, this is this written in a very popular book. Um, I'll, I'll share this with you as well. It's influence the power of psychology, um, the psychology of persuasion, my bad psychology of persuasion. And so, um, Alex Ramosi recommended, he says like, you know, most books I just skim through these 13 books. I dedicate my time. I read them over and over again. I study them. And this was one of them on the list. So yeah, I'm do it on audiobook. Um, and it's, it's really good. Just like some mind blowing things and also just like actual useful, uh, actual things that we can use. Okay, cool. So the book was written 20, 30 years ago, I think. Um, but, but basically one, at one point, someone, some psychologist, someone realized that whenever newspapers published a suicide story on the front page of the newspaper, um, more people would commit suicides afterwards. Okay. Hmm. So, you know, this isn't too crazy. Like, it makes sense. You know, there's a couple of likely conclusions. You know, maybe if, if someone's committing suicide, then, um, you know, like conditions in the world are just worse. And therefore, you know, it's more likely that other people would also commit suicide. Or yeah. you might speculate that um, if people, if, if someone's on the front page, then it's a well-known celebrity. And so people are very, you know, upset about this. And maybe they're just like, okay, like, you know, that's it. Like, it, it overwhelms. Yeah. So there, there's yeah. possibilities. Um. But what they also realized is that after a suicide, you know, was published on the front page, same situation, um, accidents, accidental deaths happened um, to like a greater degree, like the percents increased. And so this what? is car crashes or plane crashes, like anything like this. So this is when it starts to get a little bit weird. And they're like, you know, this this doesn't totally make sense. Um, and so what, what, you know, there, there's a couple of, you know, maybe maybe if there's more accidents, people are getting distracted because they're thinking about the person that died. But but they realized that, uh, you know, they did some tests and like focused on where these these come from. You know, it, are the suicides just in this small town or are they, you know, over the whole U.S., whatever they're, they're looking at. So basically what this guy came up with was that the increases um, in suicide and the random deaths were caused by the same thing, actually. So. Um, whenever someone commits suicide, you know, it makes people think about committing suicide and they think, okay, um, it's kind of like monkey see monkey do, you know, like because mm. everyone has a MacBook, then you're more likely to have a MacBook. If no one had a MacBook, then you're not going to have one, but there's yep. a little point where like, you know, if your best friend gets a MacBook, then you're going to start thinking about it. Right. And so yeah, yeah, that, yeah. all of these people were affected by the same idea. And so they all were driven to commit suicide. But what happened is that, um, some people didn't want to be seen as having committed suicide. So these people like purposefully crashed. So what? This, this even happened with airplane accidents. Like the, the airplane accident um, rate like went up to like a thousand, jumped a thousand percent every time there was this like uh, front page news story. Right. And so no way, you know, th they check this by saying, OK, you know, if people are purposefully committing these suicidal like accidents, then the death rate should be higher. You know, like more people should die in the purposeful accidents than in like random accidents, right? And so yeah. they like measured it and they was right. Like people died faster, people died more often, all this kind of stuff, you know, in car crash and in, in airplane crash. Um, so I mean this this is just like my it blew my mind that like this could happen at all. But but basically the the idea is that um you know imitation like people people will imitate um yeah and and so yeah so that that's what that wow. is. dude that's crazy that that's unreal yeah that blew my mind that's really cool well it's not cool but that's just like that's it's crazy that like a psychologist like could like analyze that like and get the data to back it and like come up with that, with that conclusion that's yeah. that's crazy did i'm curious like when this was like was all released did 
like did the media make any changes and like the things that they were putting out yeah so i i mentioned this last night and and one of the guys i was talking to said that um it's it's very uncommon for it to be like front page news nowadays so yeah. i don't know if it was directly because of this but for sure enough time has passed where people maybe started realizing on their own if anything so yeah that's interesting it makes me think like think about I, you know like i think i think most of those like effects are probably subconscious you know like i don't think someone uh sees that front page and think like actually thinks like oh okay like now i'm gonna commit suicide it's probably just subconscious like you know maybe later on they they're like okay now's the time you, you don't you know what i'm saying yeah and so it makes it makes me think like what you know like what's the information that like, i'm feeding myself like whether it's like reading through the news or like reading online or like interacting with people like like what's the information that i'm taking in that's like uh, either healthy or unhealthy that's like impacting like my like subconscious yeah yeah I definitely want to read more into that that's crazy yeah I mean I, I would totally recommend this book I'm like almost all the way done with it but um you can look at my notes if you want to but it just makes me think like this this whole book is kind of how other people persuade you both you know while you know and also unconsciously and and there's all these studies where people are like you know they they find this discrepancy and people the the people who were experimented on swear they're like no like, there's no way that this influenced me. There's no way. There's no way. And time and time again, it happens, right? And so wow, it just makes me, like, think twice about everything, really. That's so interesting. Dude, I love stuff like this. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll read this next. I made it. So, actually, I saw his post. On, first of all, thanks for showing me him. Dude, that guy's awesome. He's so, you're right. Like, all his little segments are the money. Like, yeah. every single one. Just, like, a yeah. quick 30-second video. Um, I'm reading his his book right now. Nice. And do you know that uh, the like startup kid, the like A two K? Yeah. Did you did you meet with him? So I I DM'd him on on Twitter. Okay. And did you end up like talking to him at all, or like just texting back and forth? Yeah, just a couple times. He was kind of like I said something dumb, and he like corrected me. I was like, oh, like, like that was <laughs> thing to say. You know, like I don't want to be wasting this guy's time. Like he's he's obviously a lot smarter than me and has better things to do. Um, but occasionally I'll reply in one of his threads. Uh, maybe you've seen yeah. it. But- but he he replies like instantly. It's it's really weird. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, the, like the stuff he he says is just. It's like I would pay so much money to to be, on this chain of of Telegram. Totally. And dude, he like it's so funny because there's so many times I had thought about like leaving a comment on like the thread, but then I was just like, you know what? No. Like, like I probably sound like an idiot. Like I don't need. I don't need to leave a comment like this guy's got better things to do and he's probably never going to read it. But then I looked at the thread and I was like, I wonder how many people are on this. Dude, there were like 15 people subscribed. Like, yeah. And this guy's just like spitting out knowledge. It's yeah. crazy. He, he's one of those guys. He's one of those good. guys that you like want to like follow. And it's like, man, like I wonder what he's going to do in the next like couple of years. You know, like what is, I just want to know what he's working on. Like it's, yeah, he's, he's a cool guy. Yeah, me too. So basically I, I DM'd him because I was like, uh how can i you know increase my twitter following or like twitter presence right and he was basically like oh you know like yeah and like i know how to do that and i chose not to like i could i could have like hundreds of thousands of followers and he was like i just didn't want to and i was like what, what? like that, <laughs> that's the kind of person that you you know you want to be following right so for sure I, mean, I totally what, did he did he give you any kind of like insight or reasoning on that yeah i mean he i i'd have to go back but there's like these um people trade like um like for like follow for follow like all these these communities um but they're like semi-illegal and are okay. semi against the rules so they're hard to find um but mm-hmm. he's like you know, there's all these things you can do like he sent me some links i think um but but yeah i mean he's just like i don't know if you've noticed so i've been on his thing for maybe four or five months and within okay. the last like two weeks he's been like um you know i will do this once i get rich in pretty soon yes which will be soon you know yes just, like He's just, it's like not even a question. He's just like, I will be rich soon. And yes, that's it. Like you can't do anything about it. Like, yeah. Yeah. I thought that was hilarious. Little parentheses. Like yeah. one day, like, yeah. When, when I am rich soon, like, just so you know, like that's soon. Yeah. <laughs> he, he also kind of reminds me of Sean where he's just like, he's a little bit lazy. He always talking about how he likes, he enjoys learning more than actually like working and doing stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. It, it's good for him that he also knows how to code. Um, so he has a little bit of an advantage there. Totally. 
yeah, it sounds like, and it sounds like he's got some cool stuff in the works, like in the yeah. software space. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, but hey, what I was going to say about the book is I, like, I love stuff like that. Like the psychology persuasion. Like, I don't know if you feel like this, but like, I like the last thing in the world that I want is to be persuaded. Like, like that is like, it's like, a, I don't know, maybe it's like a pride thing. I don't know. But I just like, I'm always like trying to be like hyper aware of like, whether it's like advertisements or like a guy talking to me who like works at a store. Like, I just like refuse like to be influenced by stuff like that. And I'm yeah. sure there's plenty of things that do influence me that I'm like totally unaware of. So yeah, I need, I need to read this book. Yeah. And he, he literally goes in and says, okay, like this is how you use it. And then this is how you make sure it's not used against you. So mm, that's dude, it. that's all. Okay. Love yeah. it. I think look, this, this author, Robert, I don't know, Houdini. Yeah. Um, I think there were like maybe, maybe four books that Alex listed in his down. top 13, all yeah. written by this guy. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's Do anything. Yeah. I just wanted to talk about Buddhism a little bit. If you'd done any research. Oh, on cool. Dude, I've, I've honestly, I've done zero research, but I, yeah, I definitely want to hear if you, if you, you know, if you, if you have anything. Yeah. yeah I got a little bit. So I was trying not to learn too much of the history. I figure like I can learn that other time, but yeah. I think it's interesting to know just a little bit. So there's, there's like over 500 million people right now that practice it or, you know, or classified as it. Wow. Um, and I don't know how much you know about it, but basically the whole idea is you die and then you're reborn and then you keep dying and, and having this new life until you reach nirvana, right? So you have to, mm, yep. typically that's like being a monk or, or something like that, being a Buddha. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. Um, there, there's tons of different ways, but it's all about meditation, which I really like um, and kind of yoga as well is, is tied to it. Um, mm. So the, the goal there's there's this one called yoga nidra which is like a specific form of yoga but um i thought it was interesting how they defined it so the state of meditative consciousness where the person no longer thinks moves or breathes so there's like it kind of gets like really into it um there's this wow. one practice um i'll try my best kikari mudra where um you want you stick your tongue like into your nose like through the backwards way and so basically how you do it is you take like months of practice and the Wikipedia page said you effectively sever your tongue, right? And it basically is like um, sticks sticks all the way back up and just like into your nose. And then you're supposed to be able to like rest peacefully. And then um, another quick thing that I learned is like there's there's all these different people who say you should do things different ways. So there's no like one way to do it, which I thought was really interesting, but for example, like one guy was like, oh, you need to sleep with your legs, like, you know, crossed behind your head. And this is the only way to sleep. And this is the only way that like a true yoga yogi would would sleep. So super. What? No way. Yeah. Wow. Dude, that's crazy. That's interesting. Um, dude, I, I just looked up like the like population percentage of different religions. Buddhism is pretty low on the list which yeah. is surprising to me. Like you've got like Christianity is like 31.2% of the population, Islam, 24%, uh, no religion, 16%, Hinduism, 15.1%. And then you've got Buddhism at like close to 7%. Wow. Yeah. That's which crazy. is, that's so interesting. Like, and then this is, this is interesting. The religion listed below it is like full religions, which I'm guessing is just, you know, like, just older, like older traditions or whatever, but the, like those accumulate to 5.7%, which is pr pretty close to Buddhism. That's interesting. Yeah. Cool. I'll, I'll do some more research before our next call. That's something I definitely want to dive into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. And I've, have, I've good. I was going to say, have you, have you been meditating at all? Yeah, yeah. So I was going to say that. So I've been meditating pretty much every day. I just do 10 minutes. Um, When it's silent, I tend to fall asleep. So I've started listening to youtube videos or there's a couple apps um and it, it, some of them i don't like um but i think i'm slowly gonna figure out like what the best meditation practice is for me because there's yeah absolutely is there there is not one that fits everyone so it's a very customized like practice um so i'm still kind of learning exactly how it goes yeah when you have you like reached like a like a meditative meditative state like a different state where you really i don't know like have, have you reached any kind of different state yeah, so like three times when I've been meditating, it almost feels like I like fall into like the next state of relaxation. Like it, 
it, mm. I don't think it really makes too much sense unless you feel it, but it's just like, like, like you just feel like if, if you normally have all these thoughts going away and then you're like starting to meditate and then like those thoughts uh, lessen, you know, you have less stuff and then all of a sudden just like nothing. Like you're just like, wow. like really like getting, getting into the flow. So yeah. That's it's, interesting. It's really nice. do, you, do you typically meditate in the morning or at night? It's totally random, but it's usually either the morning or the afternoon. Okay. Do you like after you meditate and maybe when you like do reach that state, it's like those three times, did it like impact the rest of your day or maybe even week? I wouldn't say, um, I think maybe it impacts certain moments. So there's like some moments where I'm just more calm than I would have been, but I don't think it generally impacts my whole day. Um, one, one podcast I was listening to said, this rich guy said, you know, it makes him marginally happier. So it's like, hmm. it's not going to fix your life, but it makes him like 10% happier. And, huh. you know, the more you do it, then like slowly you get like a little tiny bit more. So maybe in the end you're 15% happier, but, but I think it's something like that where you just like to make like little things better. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay, cool. Well, dude, you killed it on, on that, that meeting. You had some, you had some good minds there. Yeah. Cool.